Hello, soldiers. Now, I have some bad news for you. The insects have attacked Earth yet again. Good news, though. I'm your commander, King Link, and this is our last look and review of Earth Defense Force 4.1, The Shadow of New Despair. Again, it's somehow not related to Danganronpa, but I guess that's the way it goes. Now, this is the beginning of Humble Monthly Bundle for March 2019. This month, we have the EDF 4.1. Warhammer Vermintide 2 and the Cultist Simulator. It's a big month, so let's get started and I'll try to go quick with this one. Just to be clear though, I call Earth Defense Force 4.1 EDF 4.1 to make it a little easier to say. With that said, check the screen. We have giant robots attacking humans. This game is every B-movie rolled into one, having insects and robots assaulting the player. I'll try to look at the enemy models if they get close. Now, the robots look decent, but not great. You can almost see the zipper though on the insect models, you can see those in the first look, and they look poor. But the fact is, it's actually a trade-off for this game. This is similar to Dynasty Warriors, where the enemies don't look amazing, but there's so many of them on the screen. Earth Defense Force 4.1 goes to the same extreme. We have hundreds of enemies that will all charge the player at the same time, but when you get up and close and personal with one, well, you're probably going to be a little disappointed. There's also destruction in the game, but it's, you know, canned animations of big buildings falling down. It's useful for the gameplay when the enemy climb these buildings, but it's mostly just a gimmick. Still, I love looking at a destroyed city block after a battle in it. And all of this fits in with the B-movie motif. We'll be talking about that a little bit more. Now, for enemies, we have everything from giant versions of ants, spiders, and bees. You know, it's definitely not for people who are afraid of insects. There's also flying machines, bipedal robots, those are two feet for those who don't know, four-legged walkers, we even have the shield bearers, the four-legged guys here, flying transport ships, and so much more. I mean, hell, this game even has freaking dragons. So yeah, the game is all over the place, but that's partially due to the story. I mean, it's a big B movie, so they can throw anything they want at the wall and see what sticks, and you know what, they do. But the one thing they nail is pacing. Every four or five missions, there's usually something big going on. Maybe a big boss appears, sometimes it's not defeated. There's always a big moment around the corner, and it's a great feeling to see what comes next or how they introduce the next monster or creature that is set to attack. It wouldn't be a big movie though if it was well written. Yeah, I mean, the writing here is not very good, but that makes it good. It's the so bad it's good principle, you know, the room, essentially. And there's everything from a scientist reading off dialogue to the player, feels like he's reading uh, from a, a piece of paper, to hammy acting, and just... There's so many lines that the player has to make a snide comment back at. The soldiers on the field will sometimes just chant, EDF, EDF. And you know, the soldiers will sometimes sing, but really the players are going to probably trigger that more often than not. Join in if you know this one. To save our mother earth from any alien attack, from vicious giant insects who once again come back. We'll unleash all our forces, we won't cut them any slacks, the EDF deploys. Okay, I promise not to sing that often on this thing, but it is a really catchy tune, and I love hearing it. EDF 4.1 might feel familiar for fans of the series. It was familiar to me, even though I knew for sure I hadn't played this one, I actually double-checked. It turns out EDF 2025 was remade for the modern consoles, the Xbox uh, th One and the PlayStation 4, and renamed EDF 4.1. That's the version we have here, and I'm not complaining. It's a minor upgrade, but it's still a good upgrade to the game. However, diehard fans who've memorized EDF 2025, like me, will have one issue. You know, there's not really much new here for you guys. There's four new missions, all revolving around a new Godzilla-type monster called Urginus. And I'm probably butchering that a little bit, but whatever. And then the Balam. Yeah, it's Godzilla versus a giant mecha, and that's what is really new here. I'll be honest, it's really cool for this game, but it is limited in the new content. Otherwise, you know, the devs do say that 50% of this game is new. I don't think so. It's really the same game as 2025 with minor improvements, which isn't that bad. I mean, it is my favorite out of the series, so improvements are better. But technically, this version only came out two years after 2025 did. 2013 to 2015, if you really want to know the dates. So, let's talk about gameplay. Is this game all about just shooting giant bugs? Well, yeah. I mean, this is a third-person shoot-em-up, as you can see on the screen. But at the same time, it's also a bit of a loot-em-up. 
In fact, this is the first game I ever called something a loot em up, and that was way back in the day when it was just collecting tons of stuff. You have tons of enemies, hundreds of them really, and if you kill them all, they'll drop crates that you see me collecting at times. Each crate is either health, a larger health pack, weapons or armor, and you can see that at a distance. Now the health is instantaneous and just recovers your HP. Armor and weapons are saved till the end of the level, and once you win, you'll earn them. Of course, that's if you win. And you'll get some more max armor from the armor packs, which again is your hit points, and some weapons, which is just different weapons in the game for your specific class. The weapons are randomized, but there's a level system based on where you are in the game, and really, higher level weapons are better. Now, the battles here are massive, though there's a ton of missions. How many missions? Well, I'll tell you what. I'll give you a second. Just think to yourself, how many are there? Alright, time's up. It's 94 missions in single player and 98 missions in multiplayer. That's an insane number. I spent over 30 hours working my way through this game with just a single character on one difficulty. The missions can take between 5 to 10 missions, with a few of them taking closer to 30, but there's finding a group and more that takes time. But yeah, a total of 30 hours for one playthrough, well, it might be a slightly less, but it's still a crazy amount of time. Now the DLC that comes with the Humble Monthly Bundle has two mission packs. Together, they form 48 more missions. That's almost half of the number. So, continuing onwards, the player can actually play through the game with one of four classes. There's the Ranger, really a standard grunt, easy to use, but he has great weapons. That's who I'm going to be playing as today. The Wing Diver, personal favorite class. has She has a lot of agility and can use her jetpack, yes, her, because she's the only female class in the game. But honestly, she's a ton of fun to play and has so much uh, uh, movement that the, she can easily pick up everything. And then there's the Air Raiders with the ability to call in vehicles at will. And honestly, he's actually really interesting as well. Finally, we have the Fencer. He sucks. Okay, maybe the Fencer's not that bad, but he's slow, but a unique character who does everything a little bit different. You can see one at the beginning of this mission. Now, that's the one class I don't like playing, but you know, to each their own. If you like the Fencer, great. Grab him. Now, they're all good classes, honestly, and just try them all out and choose the one that feels right to you. There's also five different difficulties in the game. Easy, Normal, Hard, Hardest, and Inferno. Technically, after Hardest. And they're more like prestiges than uh, difficulties. You'll want to beat the game on Normal, or at least get close to the end, before you attempt Hard because it expects much more armor and damage values to the enemies. Now there are two ways to play EDF 4.1. There's the single player and then the online. Now the character progress does go between the two modes, but mission progress doesn't. You know, it's a really weird thing, and honestly, just go online, there's no reason not to play online. You can even do a private room with just one slot for you if you really want, but really you want to try playing with other people. The online system here is mixed though. The UI of it, in fact, the UI of the entire game, it's really unwieldy, and honestly fits more in line with the original Xbox or PS2 title than something that came out last gen in Xbox 360 or PS3, or this gen, PS4 and uh, Xbox One. But there's room lists, search functionality, and more, and honestly, well that piece works well. The downside, and the big issue here, is that there's no join in progress, so sometimes you're just going to be sitting around in the lobby waiting for other players to finish the match to join them. With no real indicators of how long they've been playing, that can be a real pain. Communication also is hit or miss. Chat messages are shorter than they should be for no reason. Voice chat is absolutely broken in that you can't hear what people are saying, so if you want to use voice chat, really go use Ventrilo or maybe just Discord or something else to set it up, then go to the game. Now, if you do want to find a group or bring up your own, you're going to have a great time. EDF 4.1 is really fun in multiplayer, and having some backup will always be worth it. Yes, the enemies get slightly more powerful, but an extra gun at your side or a hand to help you up when you fall means that having two to four players in a match is a blessing, and the more is always better in this game. So yeah, EDF 4.1 is a fun time. But let's go through a few problems. You know, I hate nitpicking, but I got to. That's why I review. So completionists beware. To 100% this game, you need to play it through the entire game, the one that took me 30 hours, 20 times. Yes, that's correct, 20. 
There's four classes, five different difficulties, but if you drop the easy difficulty, which doesn't have the achievements to tie to it, you're still talking 16 full playthroughs of four uh, different classes, four uh, difficulties. It's not going to be fast. Now, maybe this might be close to 500 hours if you do really efficiently, but it's going to be longer, I think, for most players. It's not really a problem with the game, just to be aware for people who want to complete the game. Some missions are also have variable difficulty. I can beat one of the hardest missions in the game and then go into the easiest mission with very little reason for the change. There's also stability problems as well. I got one crash where the game just closed on me with no message. Uh, about one in five new rooms that I've joined, everyone gets disconnected for no reason. Now both of these situations stink. Players can reform the rooms, but it's really a bad online experience. In addition, the frame rate here can tank on missions and the equipment screen when playing online. Changing rooms fixes it, but what even is this bug? Come on, guys. And I do want to call out that no join in progress again. It's an awful, awful mistake, and it would have been a huge improvement to the game. I mean, you had seen the previous, you should have fixed it here. There's actually no way to tell if a game room is even in progress or in the, um, in the lobby that you can join without joining the um, room itself. And finally, I do have to say, you know, this game can be quite grindy. I like it. I like it a lot. This is my type of game. But I mean, it's mostly killing similar insects over and over. And when there's diversity every so often, you're just shooting bu digital bugs and robots. I like it, but it's that type of game. And if they cut the time in half, maybe from a 30 hours for the full playthrough or 98 missions to 15 hours or 49 missions, if you do the math, I think it might be worth playing a second time in one go through. So what does this all mean? Well, let's talk about that B-movie again. You know, they didn't have the most money for those movies, and they made the movies work. You got crappy monsters, hammy acting, sometimes you'd see some mistakes, but you don't care. You're watching it for the kitsch value. Well, that kitsch value is here. EDF 4.1 is definitely is a B-movie. But it's also a B-movie of a game itself. The crashes, the bugs, the bad UI, it all really hurt the experience. You know, it's a fun game, and when you look past all of this, and it, admittedly, it usually gets to that point, it's just fun. You have a great time, and while the problems are there, it's in the background. But there's still problems here. Three years after it's come out, I think that's unacceptable. I give Earth Defense Force 4.1, The Shadow of New Despair, a... 3.5 out of 5. You know, listen, this is a far better game than Earth Defense Force Insect Armageddon. And honestly, I still think most people will, should try it out just for how outlandishly bad it is. This is kind of the room of video games. You know, I actually want to give it a personal favorite award of mine at the end of the year. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. Because I love it even if it is terrible. But that's the beauty of the B-movie. It's brilliant even if it shouldn't be. That's EDF 4.1. Now, coming up next, we got Step 2 of the Humble Monthly Bundle from March 2019, Warhammer Vermintide. It's a strange and odd lore, and that's just Warhammer on its own. Let's find out if Vermintide is going to be exclusive to the fans of the franchise, or if this can be enjoyed by everyone. Coming up next time. Now, if you've enjoyed this, or if you want to see the Vermintide 2 review or anything else, consider subscribing. We just hit 200, you know, thank you guys. So, let's try, no, let's do 300. Like and comment because you want me to know what you think of this piece. And really, I want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you everyone out there for subscribing if you already have. And if you're considering it, join the team. In addition, if you do like my videos, ring the bell for notifications when I post something new. The algorithm doesn't always show them, so it's better if you click the bell yourself and control your destiny. Until next time, guys, I'm King Link, and thank you for watching.